Okay, so here we have another games as a service, and this time it's Marvel's The Avengers. Now, when it comes to these sorts of games, I have literally thousands of hours played in both Destiny and Division games, Anthem and some time in Warframe as well, with most of my time being spent with Destiny and its sequel. If you're interested at all, I also have multiple reviews on how the state of each is at various times, plus a discussion on games as a service as a whole. But now we add Marvel's Avengers to the list and one thing was obvious almost immediately. This game manages to make the same mistakes, similar mistakes, but also manages to come up with its own problems as well. So yeah, once again, we have a games as a service title that has a disappointing launch and further makes the term games as a service seem to mean players are simply playtesting the game, but paying to have the privilege to do it. It's understood that these style of games evolve over time, but that doesn't give them any leeway when it comes to launching a full and worthwhile experience for gamers who have put down their cash for it. There was a lot of talk pre and post launch about the game that focused on the microtransactions or how the game had rewards tied to different corporate deals. And whilst I don't like either of these things, believe me when I say that I wouldn't even rank those issues or problems in the top five things that Marvel's Avengers gets wrong or just completely fails at when it comes to basic game design and delivering an experience that's worthy of putting so many hours into. These microtransactions have no impact on several areas, but focus and attention needs to be brought to these first and foremost. It isn't all bad though, and the game does manage to deliver in a few areas. If you're simply wanting to know if it's worth full price, then I'd suggest to hold off until it drops in price and delivers more on what it needs to. If you enjoy this video, then please like it, share it, and leave a comment as we delve into the problematic world of Marvel's Avengers. So let's start off with the campaign, and surprisingly, this is quite well done, even though I wouldn't say it was more than that, and isn't worth experiencing at full price for anyone apart from those who like anything to do with superheroes. You're looking at around 10 to 12 hours to get through, which is a decent length, as it doesn't overstay its welcome, but it does get padded out in several areas, which I'll get to later. The game starts with several of the Avengers being present at the opening of a second headquarters of theirs in San Francisco, in addition to the unveiling of their new heli carrier, the Chimera. But things quickly go wrong with a terrorist attack from Taskmaster, resulting in the destruction of the Chimera, plus a significant amount of the city too. The Terrigan Crystal, which powered the Helicarrier, also being destroyed, it produced what is known as Terrigan Mist, which caused a large amount of people to turn into Inhumans. With much of the blame being centred on the Avengers themselves, they go their separate ways. This is where the bulk of the narrative starts, and throughout the single player component, players will come into contact with a number of the characters, and also get to play as them as well. Plus we also get introduced to Kamala Khan, also known as Ms Marvel, who plays a pivotal role in bringing the team back together. Now to be upfront, the campaign has a lot of fun to be had, and it has some nice, almost heartfelt moments between some of the characters, but I wouldn't say you'll be thinking about them after the game has ended, as whilst their impact is good, it's certainly nothing too impressive when compared to other story-driven games. Kamala Khan herself is actually quite likeable, and is portrayed very well within the game with a voice actor, which does a very good job in bringing the character to life, and I found that the voice and visual presentation of her to fit together quite well. Usually I'll talk about the voices later in the review, but they are so fundamentally tied to the narrative that I'll bring them up now, and this is where I talk about the rest of the cast. Now, I'm not a hardcore superhero or Marvel fan, so I have no issue with the characters looking different to their portrayals in film or TV. Unless those actors were going to portray themselves in the games, then it doesn't really matter what they look like, as anything but the actual actors doing the job is going to result in them looking different. There are some similarities there, but I can see some people not caring at all, whilst others won't get over how they are different to what they're used to. And this will likely come down to how invested you are in the MCU. With three of the biggest voice actors in gaming today being a part of the project, those being Troy Baker as Bruce Banner, Nolan North being Tony Stark, and Laura Bailey being Black Widow, I can't believe just how drab and uninspiring much of the dialogue is during the game. Most of the time, it just doesn't come across as all that entertaining, and just gave me the feeling that unknown or lesser known voice actors would have been a better choice. These three have voiced numerous characters across many games, and I don't doubt their talent. Perhaps the directions they were given in how to deliver the lines wasn't enough, or maybe the script needed some extra attention to bring the best out of the voice talent. You'll get your big blockbuster type moments during the campaign, but also more dialogue heavy scenes as well. 
Overall, the campaign is enjoyable. It delivers a good story and allows players to play as each of the characters at various times. You can really feel the strength of Hulk as compared to the speed of Black Widow or the weaker Kamala Khan. But then it's also during the campaign where very soon we see one of the game's biggest flaws and that's in its level design. After the San Francisco attack where you fight the enemies on the bridge, you'll be spending much of your time looking at the map table aboard the Chimera and trying to decide which poorly designed and uninteresting level you would like to visit in order to repeat mostly the same uninteresting missions over and over again. This is where the likes of Destiny also made the same mistake, and which I wished Marvel's Avengers would avoid. You can easily see which parts of the campaign are going to be ripped out and used as replayable missions later on. But let's start with the outdoor settings first. These are relatively large in size, but they basically are also similar. Open areas with some buildings you'll make your way into, either by defeating enemies and opening the door or solving a simple puzzle to open them. There seems to be a never-ending supply of shipping containers and collectibles apparently just thrown anywhere to try and liven things up, but it just doesn't. But then we also have the restrictions placed on the movement within the levels, especially when playing as Thor or Iron Man. It won't take you all that long flying all that far, be it high or in any direction really, before you come across invisible ceilings or warnings telling you to return to the mission area. And some of these are just downright ridiculous. Why as Iron Man can I not fly over this small building or mountain? It's just poorly designed and stops any type of immersion from happening. But what about when the campaign has finished after those 10 or 12 hours? Well, this is where the wheels begin to fall off the game. Players have a number of activities to take part in, none of which are all that interesting. We get to the inevitable horde sections, which are constant, and these do appear in the campaign at times, plus other activities such as hives, basically are just a multi-level building where you'll be doing the same thing. Now it just goes for longer. And unless you really like doing these activities repeatedly, I feel you'll simply turn away from the game way before you max out any of the character power levels, even if you do increase several levels, even during a single mission. And this is where Marvel's The Avengers hits two of perhaps its biggest problems. The locations and activities you're doing there are just very average. And the other problem is just that the loot side of the game is just, well, pretty shit. One thing Destiny got right all those years ago was to have loot that people wanted, weapons and armor worth doing the same activities over and over again. This style of game turned many players away, but many stuck around or returned once content started to be added and a proper end game was established. But considering any loot you acquire doesn't change the look of your character, it just boils down to watching a bunch of numbers slowly increase so you can do more activities you probably don't care about anyway. And even though the game has come out six years after the first Destiny, it hasn't learned from it or the other games in the genre as to how to properly launch this type of game. And feel free to check out my video where I discuss games as a service more, but this is what these games need to be successful. A compelling campaign which sets up the characters and lore of the universal world. A comprehensive end game with new activities and rewards over time. A loot table which is large and which has weapons and armor that are coveted by players. Worthwhile reasons to keep logging in on a daily and weekly basis. Moment to moment gameplay needs to be enjoyable and perhaps most of all, respect the player's time. I'll discuss the combat very soon, which is quite good, but the Avengers has absolutely no loot that I cared about at all. Yeah, they have the perks and stats increases you would expect, and you can aim for a certain character build, which is both good and stupid at the same time. More on that later. The game does a fairly good job in throwing loot at you. It's just that it's also boring and unexciting, and I can't see any of it on my character anyway. Grinding through the game just became all about getting a higher numbered piece of gear for each of the equipment slots. Rinse and repeat. But then you couple this with the activities and locations which are below average, it's going to take a lot of patience for players to keep going. For fans of the genre, Bungie knew how to make interesting locations for Destiny. Hell, even Bioware made Anthem's world beautiful, but Marvel's Avengers isn't a game world you want to be returning to often, as it's just bland. But let's talk about the combat now. And overall, it's actually quite enjoyable. And when you manage to unlock most, if not all of the character moves across the several skill trees, then the combat gets some much needed depth and variety, which is missing towards the beginning of the game. 
It's pretty satisfying to beat down enemies as Captain America as you watch Thor fly through the air or see Hulk come smashing down watching Iron Man in the air shooting off projectiles at enemies. Oh, and speaking of projectiles, you'll be trying to dodge these constantly as so many of the enemy attacks come at range which can get quite frustrating and annoying. The different characters and play styles opens up different ways to play, so each play session can be different to the last. You'll just be doing the same mediocre missions and activities. The combat has a good weight and feel to it. Watching Captain America smash someone with his shield, for example, just looks and feels damn good. The downside of the combat is that you'll be doing it against some of the most forgettable enemies in recent memory, and that includes the large robot bosses, which you'll forget about long before you've taken them down. No encounter really feels all that memorable, but the enemy design is really quite poor, especially when stacked up to other games in the genre. Now, you'll be spending quite some time on the Chimera, which is your home base, similar to the tower in Destiny or in one of the outposts on some of the maps. These are home to vendors and places where you can pick up daily quests and bounties to complete. I always find these vendors to be next to useless until much later when you reach the end game, but I also had this feeling that Marvel's Avengers has too many currencies and materials to keep track of, especially when large, important parts of the game are just so forgettable, such as the level design and poor upgrades. Using in-game currency or real-world money just doesn't sit right when much of the game feels unfinished, incomplete, poorly done, and entirely not enough to do in the first place. Then we have the bugs, which fortunately weren't a big problem for me, but I did keep receiving the same daily quest repeatedly and didn't get the rewards. So if we have these problems, then maybe we can spend the time upgrading our characters and their builds. But for this to really work, we should be creating our own superhero with large amounts of customization, which would allow us to see the items and equipment we are wearing. But the other problem is within the universe itself. Why would I want to make Iron Man into a tank build or have Hulk fight at range? Again, this could be fixed by just letting us create our own characters. So I've said that the combat is quite fun and seeing as it's a multiplayer focused game, then it should be pretty damn good, right? Well, yeah, with AI companions, as multiplayer for the most part either fails to find three other players to play with, plus any players that are still playing the game are dropping like flies as people move on so early after release. The AI companions are nowhere near being able to compete with a competent human player, but how the multiplayer aspect of the game can be done so poorly is just quite sad. Even just to play it with friends as a means to relax after work and just use it to play as you chat and catch up. Between the poor matchmaking and level design, plus the lack of customization and worthwhile loot, you just need to ask yourself, like I did, is it worth playing? And the answer is no, outside of the campaign. And I don't think it's worth full price just for that. When it comes to graphics, the game can look quite good at times, but then also quite average. The animations of the Avengers, coupled with the sound effects, is very effective in making you feel like a superhero at times, as each animation blends into the next quite well. The characters themselves are the highlight, with locations being good and okay, but just incredibly bland overall. Take the Manhattan level for example, the city itself just looks very standard, with lighting that doesn't compete with other AAA games, Everything is bathed in the same light and it just looks unrealistic and average with no real finer detail. This makes shadows quite basic as well and instead of making them feel like real places, they feel like, well, video game levels. Texture detail is decent and there is no real issue when it comes to jaggies, nor was there any real dips in frame rate when playing on the Xbox One X. Performance was quite good overall, even when effects such as destruction or explosions were happening on screen. This was also true when numerous enemies were on the screen as well. The game seemed to maintain a consistent frame rate on the more powerful consoles. Marvel's Avengers isn't just another live service game that failed to hit the mark. It's a live service game that really fails to nail anything good enough to warrant playing it much at all. I did have some good times with it and getting involved with the combat and different characters, but it's ultimately a shallow game that needs some major work. If I had had many of the bugs that others did, then this review would be even more scathing. If you're wanting to compare it to other live service games such as Destiny or The Division, then it by no means comes close to them, both in content and fun to be had whilst playing. Even Anthem had some good gunplay, great flight mechanics and a beautiful open world, but once again, it's just shallow. And what it does offer is uninteresting, boring, unnecessary, or all three of them. There is no meaningful depth here, as it's just parts shoved together. It's as wide as an ocean with the depth of a puddle, 
wait for this to go on sale, have the issues ironed out and improved upon, plus have a number of content drops as well. Now, I'm going back to play Destiny. 